Inspector General of Police Mohamed Adamu has raised alarm that politicians in Edo and Ondo states are arming thugs ahead of the governorship polls scheduled for September the 19th and October the 10th, respectively. He has therefore ordered the commissioners of police in both states to reject their security system to forestall a possible breach of the peace of peace during the elections. The directive, according to a statement by police public relations officer Frank Mba, came against the backdrop of security reports that politicians in the two states are planning to foment trouble on election day as they are arming thugs to be deployed to rig the polls. The IG therefore warned the politicians to conduct themselves properly, play by the rules, and stay clear of tendencies capable of undermining the electoral process. Meanwhile, the two major political parties in the two states, the All Progressive Congress and the People's Democratic Party, have traded blame over the IG's allegations. While the Edo State APC said the IG's warning was an affirmation of the party's previous petitions and warnings on alleged arms build-up by the governor, Godwin Obaseki, and his PDP, the Edo PDP accused the opposition party in the state of sponsoring thuggery and violence. To speak on these and other issues ahead of the elections in both states, we are joined by social commentator, Eli Eweka. Good to have you, Mr. Eweka. Morning. Thank you for being with us. Uh, very quickly, if we go straight into the matter, should the IG uh, be raising an alarm or dealing with the identified security threat? What do you think is the significance of his statement on the issues of violence ahead of the elections in both states? Uh, great question. So in my opinion, I think it, it should have uh, kept this private uh, while they do the investigation because you uh, publicly announcing this alleged threat to the election uh, only give the uh, uh, the thugs and those behind them the opportunity to re-strategize and change their plans. So in my opinion, they should have kept this private, uh, call to Abuja, those who are allegedly involved uh, in this violence and then have and question them. Uh, that's what they should have done. And then secondly, uh, since the cat has been let out of the bag, now they have to put plans in place to address these challenges. Uh, first and foremost, and I'm pretty sure they are aware of those who are involved or those who are supposedly uh, planning this, this violence, they should call them to Abuja uh, for questioning, uh, possibly even arrest them uh, if need be. Uh, secondly, the IGP also needs to put in place uh, mechanism to help uh, ensure that this doesn't actually happen. One is they need to set up a mobile court whereby people who are uh, suspects should be tried uh, during uh, while the election is taking place. And then number three, they should be pro uh, be pre uh, take a preemptive steps, be proactive, not reactive. Uh, in Nigerian politics, it's always the opposite. We react instead of being proactive. So mm -hmm. this has to be in place to address. And, and it's so sad that the report is vague. They did not specify what part of the state this alleged uh, crime is going to take place or violence. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, again, we see uh, instead of looking at the core issues, it looks like the two political parties are, you know, blaming each other, trading blames between uh, themselves on the IGP's threats of violence. It, it, how worrying is that, if I may ask you? It's truly sad because uh, blaming each other is like the oldest trick in the book. Uh, the people of Edo State, they are not stupid. Uh, they, are, they don't have amnesia. So they know those folks who are who belongs to the uh, APC and also those who belong to ADP. So the public record of both candidates should speak for themselves. So blaming each other, pointing a finger out, honestly, is a waste of time mm -hmm. because people know who these people are and your records should speak for you. Right. I mean, you see, with all of, all that has been said on the issue of thuggery and the advice or warning that youths should not allow themselves to be used as thugs for politicians come election days, uh, day, why do you think that the, the matter still persists? We still have it. You know, uh, we're not sure even that the youths are not going to allow themselves to be used. Is it a question of leadership or we are missing something somewhere? It's both. Uh, it's almost like in the United States where you have the fake news. I think that also persists in Nigeria as well. There's fake news. And people will always find fault in the other party. So the youth, in this sense, is always the victim. It has always been the victim. And it's so sad that the politicians or those on top 
uh, take their family, far away from the place, from the state, probably overseas, and then use other people's children to carry out their illegal activities. So it's, it's extremely sad that it's youth will be the victim again. Uh, but but the Abbas and the chiefs and the head of, uh, of communities need to step up and talk to the youth. That's number one. Then number two, I think Isaiah Yamu and Gordon Abbasaki too should publicly denounce, they should sign a peace pledge agreement mm -hmm. saying we, we denounce any forms of violence. One, secondly, we agree to, to accept the election result if it's fair. Mm -hmm. So if we have to help the youth, it is the leadership that really have to do their part because they are the problems, not the youth. Right. The youth only, only follow the leadership of those in power. Right. I mean, as a social commentator, what needs to change in the narrative of our elections to mitigate these repeated threats of violence whenever you know, elections are coming up? Okay, excellent question. So I think first and foremost, the state, let me take that back. First and foremost, the federal government, the police and state securities need to work in collaboration with the private and federal government TV and radio stations where this is repeatedly announced that people should desist from any forms of violence. That's number one. Number two, like I said before, the police need to set up mobile court. Just the thought of having a mobile court where people can be arrested, if you have no business being at police stations, I think that will also discourage people from engaging in activities. Then number three, I think that the police or the federal government need to set up coffees whereby there is restriction, restriction of movement before during the election and after the election. That will help curb any signs or hope of any violence mm. during the election or after the election. All right. Thank you so very much, social commentator Ellie Eweka, for your time. And do keep safe out there as well. Thanks for having me.